former Afghan president Hamid Karzai is considered to be the founder of the new Afghanistan. He was first named as chairman of the interim government, appointed in the Bonn Agreement, after US-led forces invaded Afghanistan in 2001. He became the first democratically elected leader in 2004 and governed the country until 2014. Karzai was the first to call for reconciliation with the Taliban in the early periods of his administration. But his efforts for peace have been overshadowed by violent attacks that continue to plague the country, along with claims of corruption and electoral fraud. Today he is still involved in peace talks between the Taliban and the US and says talks should be led by Afghans and owned by Afghans. Karzai sat down with TRT World to discuss the ongoing peace talks and the future of his country. Ahmed Karzai, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure is mine. Honored. Thank you. As part of the U.S.-Taliban agreement signed in Doha last year, Washington pledged to withdraw all U.S. troops by May 1. In exchange, the Taliban agreed to cut ties with terrorist groups, al-Qaeda in particular, reduce violence, and engage in direct talks with the Afghan government. At the time it was signed, did you think it was a good deal? We were looking for, for peace in Afghanistan. Uh, and for that reason, we welcomed and wholeheartedly supported the U.S. initiative for the return of peace to Afghanistan. So the deal that they signed uh, with the Taliban and the declaration that they made with the Afghan government, if the two combined brings peace to Afghanistan, of course we will fully support it and we'll be happy. As you know, of course, critics of the agreement say the deal gave Taliban too much without assurances in return and that the U.S. troop withdrawal really gave the Taliban no incentive to bargain in good faith and make tough and hard compromises. Would you agree? Well, uh, well we looked at it the, f f f from the perspective of the Afghan people. It is peace that matters to them. Uh, so that's first. But within the umbrella of peace, of course, having a progressive Afghanistan, an Afghanistan that looks towards the future, an Afghanistan that's in excellent relations with the region and the rest of the world, Turkey, one such very, very prominent example of this relationship, and an Afghanistan which uh, the gains that the Afghan people have made in the past uh, 20 years in education, in the rights of women, in, um, uh, you know, uh, the liberties that the people have and the freedom of the press and the freedom of, ex of expression and that Afghanistan once again became the home for all Afghans. That these gains are kept within that ambit, we welcome it. And if that's not done, of course, we will have concerns. The direct talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban in Doha seems to have stalled. They seem to have made little progress. In fact, the level of violence has increased in Afghanistan Sadly. on the ground since the talks started Sadly, with targeted yes. killings by the Taliban of journalists, of civil rights activists, of judges. Does it seem like the Taliban is really committed to peace or willing to honor the deal? Well, we, we, we condemn violence uh, on both sides whether it's this violence by the Taliban, or by the US um, forces, or their aerial bombardments of the country, or violence committed by the Afghan government or militia forces related to uh, any side, is condemnable and, and, and is disliked strongly, intensely by the Afghan people. So violence must cease. There is no excuse for violence uh, for either, either side now. The, uh, the level of violence ha has, uh, has, yes, sadly increased. And, and, and that's a question of wonder as to, as to why. Uh, who is behind it and, and, and what is there to be gained? From our perspective, nothing to be gained. So we insist on an immediate end to violence by all the sides. I must emphasize, by all the sides. By the Taliban by the Afghan government and by mainly the United States uh, who's there uh, in the name of peace and stability for Afghanistan. Within that, of course, the peace talks will have a great opportunity and success will be there. 
The talks in Doha have shown once more that hardly surprising there is a trust deficit between the Afghan government and the Taliban. You are very experienced politicians, you know the country well. How do you overcome this trust deficit? There isn't a trust deficit between the various Afghan sides. Uh, we've had talks uh, before Doha uh, almost four times in Moscow in uh, November 2018 and then twice in uh, uh, 1919 and then just a few days ago in, in Moscow. Though the last uh, Moscow conference, which, which Turkey also attended, was more an international conference on Afghanistan, a troika conference on Afghanistan, with a declaration in which Afghans were uh, just guests and, and, and observers. But I have noticed uh, that in all those previous talks, uh, when the Afghans are together and alone, we make progress and we understand one another. So there isn't any trust deficit there. The trust deficit probably is in the foreign environment around talks and within uh, the configuration of, of things that, that, that are foreign. That has to be corrected. For that reason, uh, we believe that uh, the, the, the proposal now uh, that the talks should be held in, in Turkey, the next intra Afghan talks, is an excellent one, Turkey being a close friend of Afghanistan, a historic friend of Afghanistan, will surely see to the opportunities that Afghans agree on a solution and for a long term. You were actually one of the first, if not even the first, to call for reconciliation with the Taliban. The first, yes. Have the Taliban changed? Do you see progression? Do you see bits and pieces of changes within the organization? Yes. Yes, I see them. They are look, they are Afghans after all. Just like we are. They belong to Afghanistan. They are, they are Afghan people. And this change has to be on all sides. Uh, yes, the Taliban must change. Yes, the Taliban must accept the new realities in Afghanistan. They must accept that the Afghan people want progress. They must accept that the Afghan people want a better life. They must accept, without a question, that the role of women in Afghan society is one on which there cannot be a compromise. And that people need to be educated. And that we need to have good relations with the rest of the world and a good economy. But we must also, on our side, change. On the side that claims uh, the republic or, or democracy, that we have to have a give and take on both sides in order to, re to reach an agreement, and that we must all, to the extent possible, disengage from foreign negative influences on us that's causing the conflict and that's causing the distrust. So both sides, or any Afghan side, all Afghan sides, must be adaptable to change for peace, and must get together for the larger interest of the Afghan people. I think that's possible. You have reiterated, uh, not just in this interview, but in the past, your wish that Afghanistan remains a progressive modern republic with democratic institutions Absolutely. and elections. Uh, in your honest view, is this really possible with the Taliban in government, considering their past? That is the change we are looking forward to. That is the change we are asking uh, the Taliban to, to, to be, to become. Uh, we have examples of, of uh, Muslim countries that are doing extremely well, that are deeply Muslim, deeply believing, yet um, very progressive, quite in touch with the rest of the world, quite in competition positively with the rest of the world. Turkey is one such example, and perhaps the best example. Look at the mosques in Turkey. It's full of people when the prayer time comes. And look at the, 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 the modernity and, 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 and the, the, the industrial and cultural and um, uh, economic output that, can, uh, that Turkey gives to itself and to the rest of the world. Uh, this is a, a, a great model for Afghanistan. This has been a model since 1919 for Afghanistan. 
uh, from the time of Kamal um, Ataturk uh, and, and Aman Allah Khan. So we also have other examples in the Muslim world, but the best for us is Turkey. We have Indonesia, we have Malaysia, we have uh, others. Therefore, yes, it is possible for a Muslim uh, individual, uh, for a Muslim society to be deeply believing, practicing Muslim, and yet progressive, enlightened, and futuristically oriented. Women's rights activists are particularly concerned about uh, the announced U.S. withdrawal. They say that a Taliban return to power would compromise the progress made over the past two decades when it comes to women's rights mm -hmm. in Afghanistan. Are those concerns not justified considering the track record of the Taliban in the past? They are justified. They're very, very justified. There has been, unfortunately, um, uh, uh, a, a, a negative uh, uh, impression of, of, of the years the Taliban were in power in Afghanistan. They, they, they did uh, not pay attention to the education of, of, of the Afghan people. They did not pay attention to the rights of women. Uh, that now they see uh, the change uh, in Afghan society, that now they see uh, uh, that has changed. Uh, in Afghan society and permanently. And I know personally many, many Taliban leaders and personalities who recognize that change. They also have children. They also have daughters. There are also families. And they, uh, and they need uh, to see that change for themselves as well. Our daughters, our, our daughters must become engineers and daughters. So we don't need to go in and be treated beyond Afghanistan and other countries. And that's a human requirement. Uh, I'm sure with, with time and work that will change. And I'm glad you, 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 you focused on this question. The Afghan people want their daughters fully educated. Uh, I have my own daughters in my country and I want them the best that they can have in the world. That's their right and we must give it to them. And I, we will work with the Taliban and keep insisting with them that that right cannot be compromised. One very particular and important aspect of the U.S. Taliban agreement is, of course, the pledge on the part of Washington to withdraw all U.S. troops from Afghanistan by May 1. Given the rather insecure environment in Afghanistan at this moment, given the current circumstances, in your opinion, should U.S. troops stay beyond the deadline of May 1? The U.S. withdrawal or staying in Afghanistan beyond May 1 must be responsible in both cases. If they want to withdraw, that withdrawal must be responsible in the sense that it must make sure that Afghanistan is peaceful and that it is done in a broader understanding with major powers and the countries in the region. So that all together make Afghanistan a place of cooperation rather than competition. Second, if they want to stay beyond May 1, that too has to be responsible. The United States cannot be staying in Afghanistan that is in conflict. No. If the US wants to, wishes to stay in Afghanistan, it can only be staying in Afghanistan and be in cooperation with a peaceful Afghanistan, a stable Afghanistan, not in an Afghanistan in which the US presence is there, bases are there, but we are dying in a conflict and our children suffering, no. So you're appealing for a responsible exit on the part of the Americans? Uh, a responsible exit, and if they wish to, a very responsible stay, which means in a peaceful Afghanistan, not like what they did in the past 20 years, no. The Taliban, of course, say there will be consequences if the deadline of May 1 is not met for the troop withdrawal. Well, the Taliban have said that, but we, we would ask the Taliban to, to think, they must also think more responsibly towards Afghanistan and towards the, 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 the safety and security and well-being of the Afghan people. Uh, wherever that is done by us, the Afghans, by the Americans or our friends in the international community must be towards an end of violence in Afghanistan and the return of peace to Afghanistan. So within that, that, that uh, desire of the Afghan people for peace uh, is what we should be uh, collectively doing, the Afghans and the international community. 
The US Taliban deal, which was signed last year, was of course signed and uh, promoted by the Trump administration. Now we have a new administration, the Biden administration, in uh, charge. And uh, they set forth a proposal, namely to change the current Afghan government, replace it with an interim government. Uh, President uh, Ghani, Ashraf Ghani, of course, has rejected this proposal outright. He's not willing to step aside and says any transfer of power should be through elections not a political deal. Is this proposal, is the American proposal still on the table or is it dead on arrival? A proposal was made and the, uh, the deal with the Taliban uh, in many words, uh, directly or indirectly um, referred to, to such an arrangement. For Afghanistan, and for peace in Afghanistan. The best would be that the Taliban agreed to power sharing with the current government. The easiest would be that, that they share power, that they come and join the current government as Afghan citizens and make peace and accept President Ghani for a duration um, of the completion of the constitutional term or in whatever arrangement. And, and through that arrangement then work for the amendment of the Constitution if need be and step forward towards the future. If that is not possible, if the Taliban don't want to do that under any circumstances for whatever reason in their mind, then for the Afghan people peace is the priority. Uh, so peace must be our top priority and then for peace we must do what is necessary uh, for it. Uh, that can be um, uh, an arrangement, as I described uh, uh, a second ago, or that can be a new arrangement. But whatever the arrangement is, the future of that arrangement, uh, the foresight of that arrangement, has to be a country in which its citizens enjoy the rights of uh, choosing their own government with their own free will. So the will of the Afghan people and expressed through uh, the vote of the Afghan people is the foundation of a strong Afghanistan and I hope the Taliban and everyone else will recognize and agree to it. The Afghan people of course are very eager after so many years of bloodshed to reach peace in their country. The other country that is eager to put this uh, conflict behind is America, of course. Regardless of how this ends, this will be America's long, longest running war uh, on a record. It is no, no secret that you didn't see eye to eye with the Americans over the years. Particularly, mm -hmm. you criticized their heavy handedness mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to Afghan mm -hmm. civilians. Mm -hmm. Looking back at the two decades now, mm -hmm. how do you assess the U.S. involvement in Afghanistan in general? Do you see it mostly positive or in hindsight, do you see it mostly negative? Well, I separated into two very different compartments. One compartment was that uh, in 2001, with the tragic incidents of September 11, uh, the blowing up of the, the, the Twin Towers in, in, in New York, uh, and the killing of uh, so many innocent Americans, there was uh, a legitimate uh, total outcry by the rest of the world and in sympathy with the United States and its people, which was good. And that also led then the United States, its allies in NATO and the rest of the world, uh, even those countries who did not see eye to eye with the US, like China, Russia, and Iran, uh, they began to support the US. So a, an international um, uh, enterprise of uh, togetherness in support of Afghanistan began. And we saw the consequences of that for Afghanistan that were positive. To that, the U.S. had its own very good contributions in economic development for Afghanistan and education, uh, together with everyone else in the world. The other compartment of this was the military aspect of it and the very wrong policy or implementation of policy by the United States in what they claimed to be a fight against terrorism. That fight against terrorism wasn't 
in Afghanistan in, in any way a fight against terrorism. It was more uh, an atrocity committed against the Afghan people. Uh, the bombing of our villages, uh, the night raids on our, on our homes, uh, making Afghans prisoners within their own country, and much more, and much more. It was this aspect of the United States policy that I opposed, and I was right, and I'm glad I did it, and I hope they have recognized that had they behaved better, things would have been different now. I mean, Karzai, you were a president of Afghanistan for 14 years at a very critical juncture of your country. You are now first and foremost a citizen. Um, do you feel that your opinion is still heard and taken into account, that your experience still counts throughout this process? I, uh, as you rightly said, consider myself a citizen. And as a citizen of Afghanistan, I have uh, a desire for my country, um, first of which is peace, and then a better life uh, for the Afghan people, uh, for the Afghan children, so we can be um, uh, honorably living in our own country and in best relations with our friendly countries. Uh, this is a desire that I express, and uh, when I have something to say, uh, something that I, I think can bring about change, I hope that can be heard and listened to. And do you have the feeling that it is being listened to? I don't know. I'm doing my best. I hope I am listened to. Is there any thought in the back of your mind that you might think the political comeback now that things are hopefully getting back in order in Afghanistan, that your experience could be quite useful and valuable for the future of Afghanistan. Do you toy with the idea of a political comeback sometimes? No, not at all. No. If I did that, my efforts for peace would be compromised. I want my efforts for peace in Afghanistan to be totally clean and untainted by any political uh, you know, ambitions. So I'm not seeking any form of return to politics. Rather, I run f far away from it, far, far away from it. Uh, peace is, uh, is what we need in our country, and, and peace will be the greatest reward when it comes uh, to me and to the rest of the Afghan people. No, no return to politics at all, no. What is your hope uh, for the upcoming intra-Afghan talks here in Istanbul? Tremendous hopes. I'm sure Turkey, Turkey will, will do all to make certain and certain that the Afghan talks in Turkey, the intra-Afghan talks in Turkey are successful in bringing peace to Afghans and that trust we have in Turkey. Last question. Afghanistan has seen, unfortunately, many decades of bloodshed, of unrest, of hardship, human suffering. Looking at the situation that your country is in right now, are you optimistic about the future of Afghanistan? Absolutely. Absolutely. What gives you that optimism? The will of the Afghan people and desire for peace and a good life. As every other human society, we are a human society and we need that and we will do it. So Afghanistan will be a valuable a progressive, a modern, Absolutely. and a stable country moving uh, forward. As we were once, as we did show that um, uh, from 2002 onwards, the Afghan people came out to vote, men and women came out to vote, the Afghan girls got educated, thousands of them in Turkey, thousands of them in Turkey, and thank you for that, and all the friendship that Turkey has offered and other countries. So yes, we have proven that, and we have shown that, and with peace, you will see that flourishing like, like, like. Uh, you know, blossoms. Hamid Karzai, thank you so much for joining us. Good talking to you. Good talking to you. Wonderful. So, good talk. Mm -hmm.